two-stroke expansion chambers are simply the speed of sound matching your RPM range. That's why when you ride two-stroke, you'll get that uh, So recently I uploaded a video where I cut a two-stroke pipe off just for fun to see what it would sound like. did really well, but what it did is it also made me realize just how, uh, how misunderstood two-stroke exhaust pipes work. Uh, I was told this reduces back pressure, it kills exhaust scavenging, it doesn't help pull the exhaust gases out of a two-stroke, that two-strokes don't actually have the ability to pull their own exhaust out of the combustion chamber, that it would destroy my valves. Anyways, today I want to talk about what a expansion chamber does, how they're designed differently for different types of riding, and I'll even talk about why a 500 or 300 two-stroke expansion chamber is shaped so drastically differently uh, to a 125. Luckily, I have the pipe. This is just a really general description of these expansion chambers. There's a lot that goes into them, and I'm sure you guys can tell me in the comments. But expansion chambers are that. As the piston's going down in a two-stroke, it's actually pressurizing the air underneath, and then as soon as that air can go somewhere, because it's not going to go out the back through the intake, there's a reed valve that closes. That compressed air below the piston will eventually be allowed to go into the combustion chamber through the holes in the side of the, the cylinder. That happens, it forces the air in, and it also forces the air out into the exhaust pipe. Now as that happens, a little bit of new fresh air goes out of the exhaust pipe of the two-stroke. And that's actually one of the reasons why a two-stroke pipe doesn't get so insanely hot compared to a four-stroke. Because you get that a little bit of extra gas is going out. So a sonic boom comes out through the, the, the boom of the engine, comes back, hits this now reducing chamber, which is not what it's called, but it's basically that, and then the sound wave will bounce back and hit this. And now it's not exhaust scavenging. It's not hitting the piston and pulling exhaust out like it does in a four-stroke. What it does is it takes unspent fuel that get pulled all the way through the combustion chamber and it just pushes it back in just for a little bit of boost right when you need it and that's what the power band is. Now if you want to change where your power band is, you can design the pipe differently. But the sound takes time to travel. It takes time to go from here to here and back again. So you can actually calculate how much time it's going to take to, to travel that distance and that is when your power band is going to hit. The longer the pipe, the longer it takes sound to go from here, hit this, go back again. Now when an engine RPM goes up really high, you don't have as much time. When an engine RPM is really low, you have more time between those things. So that is actually the reason why 300, 500, and 700 two-stroke expansion chambers are just so excessively long. But they, don't, they don't rev as high as a 125. So a 125 two-stroke pipe goes boop, boop. The reason for that is it's going to be revving really, really high. So between RPMs, there's less time for that sound to go back and forth. Get it? So the power band is not exhaust scavenging. The power band is not back pressure. The power band is actually the sound going out, hitting this wall, going back, and some of that unspent gas that we talked about that makes the exhaust a little bit cooler. It's coming out into the exhaust and it's actually being forced back in. That's why when you ride a two-stroke, you'll get that It's actually that moment where this pulse length matches up to the RPMs perfectly. Now, this is for a 300cc two-stroke. This KTM right here. This is for a 300cc two-stroke, my, tri my trials bike. See how different they are? These are tuning parts. These parts are designed to tune the engine all based on how long it takes sound to go from here, travel through the pipe, hit this section that gets smaller, and go back again. So, the shorter the time between explosions, the shorter the pipe needs to be. The higher the RPM, the shorter the pipe. When you have a small 125 revving up to 18,000 RPMs, you don't need a really long pipe unless you want, for some reason, low-end grunt, a low-end power band on a 125, which doesn't sound very fun. But on an engine that can't spin up to 18,000 RPMs, like a 300, simply due to general mass of the piston, you want a lower end power band. And that is what a two-stroke expansion chamber does. It's not for back pressure. It's not for exhaust scavenging in the same sense. The expansion chamber is basically a resonance chamber. It says, okay, 
we want to hit peak efficiency, peak power at this RPM. We do the math. They do the math based on length, width, all that stuff. And it takes the sound this much time. They go there and back again. And that's where we want our power band to be. So you can actually calculate your power band RPM based on your expansion chamber length with all that stuff. It's designed to basically little mini charge at a specific RPM range. Hopefully this clarifies some things. I'm, I know that personally I'm not the best at explaining things. There are a ton of videos on the internet where you go and learn about this stuff at a much higher level. Two stroke expansion chambers are not black magic. Two stroke expansion chambers are simply the speed of sound matching your RPM range. That's really it. Simple as that. Maybe also this will help clarify some of the people telling me to rev it out, bro. It's 300. It is revved out.